Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the, the new Buddy Fight set, Drums Adventure, which is uh, a new set that has a whole bunch of new forms for drum, and <laughs> I know it's already been out for a while, but heck, by the time I finish editing this video, there'll probably be a whole new set out, but, um, but of course, if I'm talking Buddy Fight, of course, first I have to talk about how everybody's been telling me Ryuga's finally back after that big thing I said in the video, but... Here's the thing, he kind of left the plot behind. When he showed up, he was kind of like, Yes, I'm back, but I kind of left the plot behind and I need a new one. You'll do. What? <laughs> that, that's kind of how it feels. I mean, I know now the plot is, is coming back, but it kind of had to literally infiltrate its way back into the story because we've gone from one tournament arc to another tournament arc. Great. I mean, the next episode has some promise, but that is, like, what? 25 episodes since we've had anything like this, so that, that's still a pretty long gap between action. That's like an entire season of episodes in between awesome episodes, so anyway, back to, uh, back to Drums Adventure. So anyway, Drums Adventure is a new set. It introduces Dungeon World, which is, um, the new world for the set. It's kind of an interesting world. So with this brand new world and all that stuff, what uh, what region gets the most support? Why, Dragon World, of course. I mean, I know it's uh, you've got. Uh, I know it's the set that introduces the the Shinsengumi and the Thunder Knights. But here's the thing: even aside from those, there are a ton of uh, a ton of new cards. Like you got like Blade, Shakram Dragon. You got like Aroi Lance Dragon, which is just kind of terrible. All these generic dragons. I got a ton like Bardis Drake, Shadow Shamsi Dragon, Tail Sword Dragon, and yeah, the game just wouldn't be complete without Leather Buckler Dragon, would it? <laughs> this is probably one of the worst cards that Dragon World has. It's 1,000 attack, 5,000 defense. Um, it's kind of the Armor Dragon version of Leonidas, but Leonidas kind of came out because, you know, the Buddy Fight people, they kind of don't like Dragonites, which is why they kicked its one user off the show. Um, I got a parallel foil one to boot. This, uh, they're, they're just kind of filling out all the numbers that Dragon World hasn't filled out yet, and as a result, like, more than half the set is Dragon World, even though they introduced a new world, and uh, why don't we talk about that? Uh, Dungeon World is the uh, new set they've come out with. It's actually a multifaceted set. You've got the adventurers and the, 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 uh, the dungeon enemies. I was gonna say monsters, but it's dungeon enemies. Um, like, you got, uh, the, the, the adventurers, their gimmick is all teamwork. Like, this guy, he gains penetrate if he link attacks with another adventurer, and the cool thing is, that includes, like, weapons with the adventurer descriptor, like the sword here. The sword has the same effect, so these two link attack, it's gonna be fun times. Um, we also have things that are, that are supporting, like, you have the mission cards, which lets you, uh, lets you uh, yank adventures from the deck, and there's another one that lets you uh, draw cards as you defeat monsters. That's also really cool. And of course, uh, Brave Equipment Glory Seeker, which is currently one of the best ones out there. Not only is it a cheaper uh, Drago Brave, but it also has that effect that can... Uh, it's one of the few things that can allow you to survive a Gargantua Punisher, and it's a really good item in its own right, so... This one is definitely going to see a lot of use. I don't think there will be a single Dungeon World deck that does not use this card because it's really powerful, even just on its own without the effect. So, Glory Seeker is going to be seen a lot. I've been pulling so many copies of this card. It, I, I should probably build a... I was actually going to build a, a, a Penetrate Dungeon World deck that uses the same thing. Um, and speaking of adventurers, I've heard about this thing called... Uh, I think it's the Tetsuya Challenge, where you have to wrap the entire battle. Um, I want to extend the Monk of Bread Deity Prios challenge in that after you play him, both players have to play every move to the tune of the Muffin Man. Like when you play him, you say, do you know the Muffin Man? And the, the player has to follow up with what they do to the Muffin Man if he's involved in anything. Like, um, I played against a Dungeon World deck that used the Muffin Man a whole lot, and I, for some reason, I'd always pull Armor Knight Demon every time. So, my lyric would be, I do not like the Muffin Man. So, that's a fun little challenge without being based on an annoying character from the show. Um, and then, of course, there is the Dungeon Enemy. The Dungeon Enemy strategy is about combining a bunch of really big and really small creatures. Like, um, Dungeon World gets some really good size zero monsters for their deck. The, the Fate Skeleton and the Mabeshiba, the 
the Dog card, which is which are both really good. They're actually slightly better than uh, Danger Worlds, which is kind of interesting. And um, they, you pair them up with like the big size threes or like the Demon Lords and stuff like that, and that's kind of the gimmick there. Um, you'll notice Master Skeleton has a different border, and that's because it's actually a promo from the set they give out as tournament prizes that came out before Drums Adventure came out. It has a, a more brown border, and I actually kind of like that because these gray borders are the exact same color as the generic cards from set one, so I keep getting those two mixed up, and I like this. This has a nice... It's, it's got a nice pop to it. It actually really stands out against the cards. I don't think they've had a set that uses this color. I mean, Legend World's going to use gold, so I don't know why they changed it. I like this a whole lot better because it's easier to tell apart. It has a nice, distinct look. I, I really like that. Um, so, yeah, and they've, uh, they've got, uh, like, um, there's some, some lifelink characters as well, like Thunder Spartus, who has... Lifelink too, so there's a lot of the, a lot of the dungeon enemies, particularly the demon lords, have lifelink to them. But they have they have a lot of power to that, so it's it's not just ancient worlds gimmick; it's the dungeon enemy gimmick as well. And there's cards that mix the two, like there's a card called Continue, which lets you pull one dungeon enemy and one adventurer from your discard pile and put them into play. Um, but you have to have one of each, and I'll have some more on that later. And Magic World's gotten some good support. Of course, it's got uh, Dragon Wizard Quinus Axia, the gayest card ever made. Um, I mean, he is literally... It's not that, that he's, he's colorful or anything. He is a new character in the show, and he is literally homosexual with a massive man crush on Drum. <laughs> I'm a hugger. Don't pretend to be so modest. You're the strongest ever. My buddy. Get off of me! Oh, my. Um, like, even his flavor text says, Oh, where could my prince be? Um, although, you gotta give him props, you know, for it's probably one of the first openly gay character in, like, a kid's cartoon show. I said openly. <laughs> but anyway, the new gimmick for Magic World, they've already kind of had this, but this just makes it even stronger, is direct damage. This guy, when you play him, he, uh, pings, um, a target player for damage. Uh, that's kind of cool. I don't know if it quite justifies making him a uh, triple rare. I guess that's so he'd be a uh, triple rare in the show, but honestly, I think Dragon Wizard Burning Wand is a bit better at that, and he's just an uncommon, although since you only get one uncommon a pack, he might as well be a rare. I actually got a couple parallels of him. Um, what do you do is you rest him, and he pings for one damage. He's kind of like a free Beckstein, so if you can get him out turn one, that's more free damage you can do on the first turn. And um, they've also got... Um, of course, there's Magician Drum, I showed you before, and uh, Flame Master Ganzak Deva, which is based on the Flame Wizard Ganzak. It's kind of his uh, more empowered form, and he can use uh, another direct damage effect if there's a Ganzak in the discard pile, either kind. Um, but, of course, all these abilities are really powerful, so their other gimmick is a card called Gotcha, where what you do is um, you can use your opponent's gauge to pay for activated abilities as well which is um, a pretty fun card. There's some other cards that charge the opponent's gauge, so you can use gotcha and stuff like that. Just hope they don't pull a counter out when you when you play this, or they might ruin you, because it costs two gauge to play gotcha. Um, generic. Generic um, isn't really been an exciting thing so far. It's got a couple of good utility spells, but this one introduced a couple of exciting ones, and it's mostly in the world of the tarot set. The tarot set is uh, it's different from the chess set in that Rather than being kind of a poor man's dragon world, it actually has a strategy where you have these really powerful cards that are really expensive, but if you have enough tarot cards in play, you can play them for free. And the two most exciting are Hanged Man and the Emperor. The Hanged Man is a size zero generic monster, and that means now every deck has access to a size zero monster. Now, that sounds pretty exciting, but... Um, Hanged Man has about as much of a chance to be a nuisance as it does an advantage, because you'd think, oh, Ancient World's all about size 3 monsters, so throw in the Hanged Man, except the main Ancient World deck uses Dual Seeger, and he can only have Dragon Lords put into his soul, so you'd have to displace Dragon Lords in order to put the Hanged Man in there, and that's not really a favorable outcome. I mean, he might see some use in Magic World, which would probably be an interesting place for him if you if you do the the drum bunker strategy or the deva strategy those would the hanged man could probably be useful there but that's at the moment all i can see and the emperor is currently the strongest size one monster ever made he is a 5000 5003 critical size one monster however he can only attack if you have another tarot card in play but you know you can just play another emperor although i'm a little disappointed because i'm a huge fan of jojo's bizarre adventure and i was kind of secretly hoping that the Emperor would be the equip item, kind of like the gun that Whole Horse uses. 
Like, if they made that the tarot equip item and that could count for the cost of the cards, then tarot could actually be a pretty decent contender. I mean, it's a decent contender with the Emperor, but it could be even better if you did that. Um, although, if there is, if there is uh, one, um, one term you could use for this, uh, this set, it would probably be typorific. Like, you have the, the dog set. It's not just Mameshiba. It goes all the way up to, actually, there's actually a Tosa Hound, but there's a bunch of dogs, but they call them Cobalts as opposed to Kobolds. Now, kobolds are actually supposed to be kind of dog things. I know Dungeons & Dragons has them as, like, lizard, dragon things, but that's, that's Dungeons & Dragons. Your typical kobold in a lot of other stories is a dog-like creature, which makes me wonder why they got kobold out of koborodo. Oh, uh, oh well. Um, and, of course, there is Conquering Blade Dungeon Domination. Its equip cost is... I guess we'll never know. It's like... It's like the number of licks to reach the center of a Tootsie Pop, which is 300 in my uh, count. But, ugh, <laughs> no equip cost, and I am certain that this card called Tuxor Dragon is exactly the same way. Uh, 5,000, 2,000, 1 damage with Penetrate. That is actually an exceptionally powerful card, and it just doesn't add up, because the other card I have with Penetrate that's like this is 3,000 attack, 2,000 defense for 1 damage and it has no gauge cost. I imagine they missed a gauge cost on this one, and that's why it's the way it is. Um, although probably the most heartbreaking one is Magical Fortress Orzer Kleins, who is, um, he's a size one monster, and he's actually kind of the champion of the mixed Dungeon World deck, mixed Dungeon Enemy and Adventurer, and they have him listed here. The card says that he is an adventurer and a demon lord. Now the demon lords are the the really powerful dungeon enemies that can um, do some additional effects, but that is apparently a typo. Apparently he's supposed to be pure adventurer, but since he is a mixed card, he uses he shuffles a dungeon enemy and an adventurer into the deck to draw one and charge one. If he'd been the demon lord card, that would have opened up for cards like Demon Lord's Dungeon, which can only be played if you have a demon lord in play and would have all sorts of possibilities for um, a mixed deck. It, I, I kind of wish that if they ever do, if they, maybe if they errated it again, they could make him the Demon Lord again, or if they make a new version of him, if they made him a Demon Lord, kind of as a tribute to this, and also as kind of a tribute to the opportunity that could be, because it seems like an interesting character, you know, like a good guy Demon Lord. Maybe he's like, got, he's fighting his own darkness or something like that. That's actually kind of an interesting character, and it would make an interesting archetype. Um... So yeah, that's uh, Drum's Adventure. I'm sorry I don't have the other versions of uh, the other version of Drum, the Thunder Knight Drum, but I actually traded that to get a bunch of important cards for the 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 uh, the Magician's Drum deck. So hopefully I'll have a couple more decks up and running, and um, we'll just have to see what the new set brings. And if they if they've because here's the thing, I'm normally an Ancient World Danger World player, so this set had like nothing I was looking for in it. So with that, that, that disappointed me a little bit. I was told there might be Ancient World in it, but of course there wasn't. And there's one Danger World card, it's the Buddy Rare, but um, it, it'll probably be a common in the next set, the, the Cerberus Ace. So anyway, we'll have to see you on the next set, and until then, this is Kodak signing off.